Hey everyone, in this video we're going to take a look at the grammar exercises from chapter 3 of the Road to Latin textbook. Now before we dive in, like I always tell you, um, if you want to see the, the chapter in a different way or get some notes, I'd recommend you go to Novalat and check it out. Um, you can find all the grammar explanations, videos, just a bunch of stuff to kind of help you out, and other practice problems as well using a website called Magistrula, um, just if you're looking for some extra practice beyond what you'd find in the Road to Latin textbook. So I'd encourage you to go take a look. Um, before we go over the, the problems, what I always tell you in these is the first thing you got to do is read through the grammar notes on your own and practice this on your own too, right? So in other words, try to do these problems or, or this problem set, these exercises, and see if you can get the right answers or feel comfortable that you have the right answers. Um, then use my video as sort of a double check just to make sure that you're on the right track, but you don't want to just watch my video um, to try to understand. It's a lot better if you do it on your own first and just use this as a double check. Okay, so if you haven't done that, pause the video, go do it. Otherwise, let's walk through it together. So you start with this. You have um, number one says Tulia Philly blank bone blank amat. Okay. So the way you unpack this is you want to look at the different endings. You already have Tulia, which is a nominative singular ending. So that's my subject. Tulia amat. She loves. So since I already have a subject, I'm not looking for another one. I'm looking for a direct object. What does she love? It would be filiam bonam. She loves the good daughter. That's the only thing that makes sense here, right? I already have a subject. I just need a direct object. Okay. Now in number two, we have silva pulcra domin blank roman blank delecta. Okay, so again, we already have a subject similar to number one, silva pulcra, the A ending is the nominative singular ending, meaning it's a singular subject, and I have a singular verb, delecta, so it all kind of matches and makes sense. So my subject is the beautiful woods, the silva pulcra, and my verb is delecta, delight, right? So the beautiful woods delight, what? I'm looking for a direct object. That's why it's going to be dominam romanam, right? The woods delight the Roman mistress, okay? So again, like I said on number one, just follow the endings and you'll be able to piece it all together into something that makes sense, right? There's only going to be one right answer. And number three, you have famine blank, wheel blank, et ankil blank, habit. Okay, so everything's missing here. So when you don't have any endings on your nouns, this is where you really need to think. My verb is habet, it's singular. So I know I'm looking for a singular subject. I'm looking for something to end in that. So I have the word faming, right, which is the word woman. I have the word, word for house, wheel, and the word for slave woman, ankyo. Okay, so just try them out on their own. If I make faming, femina, I'd be saying the woman has something, right? I'd need direct objects, a house and a slave woman. That makes a lot of sense, and that is the right answer. You're going to say, Femina wilam et angilam habet. But just to double check, try it another way. If I make wilam, wila, make it my subject, I'd be saying the house has a woman and a slave woman. It just doesn't make sense. Why would a house have anything? The same thing with ankila. If I made ankila, ankila, I'd be saying the slave woman has a woman and a house. It just doesn't really add up, right? The other th uh, hint that um, uh, makes this well, the endings that we're using here, right? Femina and wilam and ankilam. The other hint is the conjunction et, right? So it's connecting wilam and ankilam. So it makes sense because the woman has two things, okay? So there's a couple context clues that tell you that the only right answer is going to be femina, wilam, and ankilam habit, okay? In number four, you have ankil blank, laborant, quote, domin blank, amant. Okay, so again, we have uh, plural sub, uh, sorry, plural verbs here rather with laborant and amant. So you're saying they work and they like. So the question is, what's my they? Well, the only nouns I have are onkil and domi, right? So I'm either saying the slave women work or the mistresses work. Okay, so the answer is going to be ankilai and dominan. You're saying the slave women work. OK, it makes sense in terms of the context, right? Slave women would, would be working in a, in a Roman household. Right. But it also makes sense when you get to the second part. You're saying the slave women work because they like the mistress. OK, it wouldn't make sense to say the mistress, uh, the mistress likes or the mistress is like. Right. And because you have a conjunction right with quote, you really have two different pieces here, two different sentences. So the only thing that makes sense is Anki Lai Laborant, right? The slave woman work. You wouldn't say they work the slave woman. I know in English that kind of sounds right, but it doesn't match up in Latin. Okay. So you're saying the slave woman work because they like the mistress. Now I'll just preface this again. This is one of these road to Latin um, sentences that, you know, 
in the 1930s, you know, you could probably say something like this. I don't think it's really great, uh, in, you know, sitting here in 2023 to be talking about um, slaves or slave women liking their mistresses. I'm sure it probably did happen. It feels a little um, sort of a little sticky, but we're going to keep the sentences the way they are in the textbook just so you can work through it. Right. Uh, I know in my class, sometimes I adjust these, but if you're using road to Latin, I'll keep it the way it is um, and just kind of honor what the authors put in there. OK. Now we get to number five. You have wheel blank, magen blank, est pulk blank. Okay, so you're you're going to make them all a. They're all the subject. You're saying we la magna est pulcra, right? The big house is beautiful. Now, how did I get there? Well, it's because I don't have any direct object, right? My verb is is, and something we've we've been learning is that when you have the verb to be. Um, you can think of it as an equal sign, right? So it's all going to be nominative case. So the big, ha uh, the big house is beautiful. You could also say the beautiful house is big. You know, you can kind of play around with this however you want. Um, but that's what the answer is going to be. There's no direct object here. It would be different if you said something like the big house has a window. Now you'd be introducing a direct object. But if you're just saying it is beautiful, we stick with nominative case. And it's singular because our verb is s, right? We have a singular verb. So we use a singular subject. On number six, you have agricoli, sil, blank, amant. So we already have a subject. It's plural, agricoli, right? That's nominative plural. And we have a plural verb. So it's, it, makes, it uh, makes sense that they're going together. The farmers love something. What's the something they love? The woods, sil, want, right? You just have the direct object there. That one's pretty straightforward. In number seven, you have terra et silva, right? Both those words are already nominative singular, meaning those are my subjects. OK, and together they would make a plural subject, the ground or the land and the woods, which is why you have delectant at the end, the plural verb, the land and the woods delight something. Now, the blank is agricole, right? Now, since I already have a subject, I don't need another one. That's why it's agricola, right? It's going to be a direct object because I, I don't need another subject. So you're saying terra et silva agricolam delectant, the land and woods delight the farmer, which makes sense, right? Farmers like land and woods. Got it. Now, number eight, we're starting to introduce the questions, which is part of the grammar for this chapter. Now, the NE on delectat, right, um, means you're just asking yes or no question where you're not sure what the answer is. So you have delectat ne aqua nauta. And remember, I'm not sure if it's going to be yes or no, but I have a subject, aqua. So if I rework this, I'm saying the aqua, the water, delights something, which is why delectat is singular. Now, since it's a question, you'd say, does the water delight? I need a direct object, right? What does the water delight? Now, Tom, the sailor, okay? And again, the any just means I'm asking a yes or no question where I'm not sure what the answer is going to be, right? So you translate this in English as does the water delight the sailor, okay? Now, on number nine, we have none. Now, we use this when you're asking a yes or no question and you're expecting the answer to be yes. So a lot of times it gets translated as surely, but there's a couple of different ways you could do it, okay? We have none fenestra est blank, right? Apert blank. So again, we have our subject fenestra, which is a window, and we have the verb to be. So we said when you're dealing with the verb to be, you're using the nominative case on both sides, but you think of it as sort of an equal sign. So the main idea is the window is open, aperta, right? It's, it's kind of going with fenestra. Now, since I have none, I translate this as surely the window is open, or you could even say something like the window is open, right? Right? In English, you're kind of, you're, you're phrasing it in a way that you're expecting the person to say yes, okay, which is what none does in Latin. Now, in the last one, number 10, we have the different or the, uh, the third type of yes or no question, num. Num functions similarly to none, but instead of expecting a yes, I'm expecting a no. So when I have num casi sunt polk blank, right, ignore the num for now, but it just means I'm expecting a no answer. The main phrase is casi sunt polkrai, right? The, the huts are beautiful, okay? Now, since casi is plural, Polkrai will be plural. Again, you have the verb to be, sunt, in the middle. So it's just nominative plural on each side, okay? So now the question becomes, what do I do with noom? So one way to translate it is to say the huts aren't beautiful. You add the negation in English because technically that's what noom is doing. So you can say the huts aren't beautiful, are they, right? And you're implying that the answer is going to be no. So again, another way to do it is say the, the huts aren't beautiful, right? Right, you could put right at the end of this in English and it would get the same thing because I said they aren't beautiful and expecting the person to say, no, yeah, you know, you're right. They aren't beautiful. OK, so that's where you have the, the, the negation happening with Noom. I'm just expecting a no answer. OK.